I don't even know how man would survive in space. I cannot answer that. I don't know. But everybody can answer anything. Yes, sir. A couple of years ago, I heard about bacteria Sorry. A couple years ago, he heard about a Years ago, I heard about bacteria being developed and uh, to get rid of toxic spills, uh, nuclear uh, waste, stuff like that. Do you have any idea how far these uh, developments are proceeding at this point? Do you know how far that, that development is proceeding at this point to clean up bacteria, to clean up toxic waste? They are using it experimentally. But that isn't the problem. The real toxic waste is the mind of man. If you don't change that, you're going to have all one thing after the other to work on. We want to work on the whole environment as an operation. The cities of the future are round, those of you that have seen that. The middle of the city has everything, medical care, schools. So if you live adjacent, if you work in the medical center, there are houses there for you. And the way the trees are arranged, you can't see another house. It's a slow S. And there's brooks and ponds and waterfalls. And you can't see the industrial buildings. And all industrial buildings are equipped with uh, a guy named Cottrell, about 80 years ago, designed the Cottrell precipitator, where dust and smoke go past two parallel plates and become charged. Then when they get to the next set of plates, they're attracted to it. So just warm air comes out of all factories, no more smoke. 80 years ago, I've only seen it on two factories in the world. No. Why? Because they don't have to do that. If politicians knew about technology, they don't know anything. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They may be nice guys too, which I doubt, but they don't really know anything. So if you elect people to political office, or you elect military people to the, in the Pentagon, or else they grow by being there, the Pentagon thinks a certain way. So they give Army and Navy the latest technical equipment. They had that at Pearl Harbor. And two soldiers using radar said, there's a bunch of planes coming toward Pearl Harbor. So they told it to a captain. Yeah, they're probably our planes. And that was a Japanese attack. Then we have all kinds of military bases. And these people hijacked two airplanes, more than two really, and flew into the towers. So you say, why are those damn Arabs making weapons? Why are they, the North Korea building armies marching in rockets and all that? Why is China doing that? I'm going to try to tell you why. There's a newspaper in England called The Telegraph. Don't take my word for it, you can write for it. Headlines, U.S. intends to bomb nuclear seven cities. How many of you knew about that? Not one hand. Oh yeah, one hand. U.S. intends to bomb nuclear, seven cities. Sneak attack, by the way. And then it names the city, China, North Korea, on down the line. What would you do if China said we intend to flatten out America, England, and France? You'd on to the tooth. But that information is censored, kept away from you, except by the telegraph. I don't know why they ran it, but the Pentagon released it. If the Pentagon intended to do that, they were stupid to release it. I'm trying to tell you how stupid people are. The Pentagon wanted a strong defense system in the northern region over Canada in case the Russians came over. Do you think the Russians would come over that heavily armed area? They come over another area. In New York, they have a place called Fort Hamilton. It's a big fort with guns that come up. You're operating on the assumption they're coming up New York Harbor. They'd come any other way. There's nothing man can think of that another nation can't think of to counteract that. Now, this is something I wouldn't do. I can design clothing that gives off poison gas, so when you get on an airplane, you can x-ray the hell out of it. It won't show. No metal. You can't bring a knife, spoon, or fork on an airplane. But when you're traveling first class, they give you a steel knife, fork, and spoon. Then they tell you, under your seat is a life raft. You pull it out and pull it in, and it blows up, 
and you show you how to get in. If you land in the North Sea, you'll live about 12 minutes with that life raft. So what you really want is a passenger section to disengage and keep you alive in the cold water with food and everything else. Now there was a time when they talked, the Arabs talked of a magic carpet. You sat on the carpet, you flew around. But if you had to take a leak, where did you go? And, and if you had to eat, or if there was a rainstorm, you stuck on the carpet. Today you got an airline that was food, everything, washrooms, far beyond the magic carpet. The future will be fantastic, and everyone will live very, most of them live in poverty. I'm talking about intellectual poverty. They know where to invest money, but they don't know how to live. 